morning, happy, very gross and drizzly Monday, and welcome back to my channel. It's week two of my Harriet Watt textile design school adventure, and I'm on my way to my first lecture of the week, which is called Future Textiles. I don't know how much I'm actually gonna be able to show you, because it is mostly just like a lecture-based class, but we'll see if anything interesting happens. Hello again, I just got out of my lecture. I made a quick stop in my dorm and then I'm actually going into town with some of my friends. One of them has a car and it was offering to drive us to get groceries, which is so, so kind. So I'm definitely taking advantage of that. <laughs> Hello again, I just got back in my dorm and I'm so relieved that I finally got kitchen stuff. I've been here for like, two weeks and I just haven't had anything to like actually make food. So I got pots, pans, I got a cutting board, a like baking sheet. I think I'm set for the semester and that feels so good. So far I've just been like trying to eat on campus as much as I can or just like making like sandwiches and stuff. So like hot food is definitely gonna be a nice change. I don't really have any plans for this evening other than just like working on stuff. I have to edit videos for you guys. I have to do like a couple school things here and there. Nothing all that exciting, so I will probably see you tomorrow morning. Good morning, happy Tuesday. I'm just walking over to my afternoon class today. This is kind of like my all-encompassing like CAD weaving design class. I don't really know if anything is actually going to be like super exciting to show you because it might just end up being lecture today, but I'll let you know if anything happens. Oh, also I'm wearing two things that are like little Scotland souvenirs that I've gotten on this journey so far. One of which is this necklace that I got at the yarn festival. And then I have this like royal blue cardigan that I actually got in Edinburgh when I was with my family. Let's head to class. After our lecture, my classmates and I headed up to our weave workshop to collect some yarn samples for our sketchbooks. Basically, we just explored the entire collection of yarns to find colors and textures that related to our color studies. And then we took little clippings to include with our work. In last week's vlog, I went blackberry picking nearby campus and one of my friends brought me a whole bunch of scones and jams that he had made from the berries that we picked, which was so, so kind. Hello again, I just finished up in class. I'm just trying to like speed walk to my dorm because it's really misty. I have my scones, which is wonderful. And I'm pretty much just gonna like go to my dorm and just work on things all evening. So I guess I'll say good night and I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Wednesday. So today is definitely gonna be work day, but I figured it might be fun to take you along because I think this work is gonna be pretty fun. So you saw yesterday and also in my previous videos that I've been working on this little sketchbook of color studies as a part of one of my assignments. So I've just been combining like images from Pinterest that I find inspirational and like magazine clippings. I found this like little nature magazine. So there are a lot of little like bugs and fish. And then also just like fabric scraps from when I went to that like secondhand art supply store. So a lot of this has just been like the works of other people that I'm just like combining into little palettes that I find inspiring. And now I have to add some more of kind of like my own explorations to this mix. So today I'm pretty much just gonna play around with art supplies and just see what I can come up with. The only thing that makes this really hard, and I've talked about this in some of my other videos, is that I don't actually have a whole lot of art supplies here. I pretty much came to Scotland with like just things that I needed to wear and like some things to live in this apartment. But in terms of art supplies, I have pretty much nothing. So I've just been like trying to collect things as I find them, which surprisingly is way harder than I thought it would be. Like we don't have like a campus art supply store down in the town, which takes a long time to get over there. There 
aren't really like formal art stores, it's just like places that might have supplies. So if I want to actually go art supply shopping, I have to travel over like an hour to go to Edinburgh, which I just haven't done yet recently. So my color explorations are definitely going to be done with just like whatever I could find. Which at this point is just some oil pastels that I found at the secondhand shop. And then a teeny tiny travel watercolor palette. So <laughs> my options are really limited, but I'm gonna make the best of it. I do have some packages coming tonight. I ended up ordering some stuff, but of course they're not gonna be here until like the end of the day today. So I'm just gonna make it work with what I have. Hope those packages come early and like run over to the mailroom to grab them and just have fun exploring and experimenting with just what I have. <laughs> so basically what my plan is, is that I'm gonna take my palettes that I created, just kind of like pick a palette, pick a medium and just play and see what happens. And I'm gonna repeat this a couple times. I think I'm mostly gonna focus on, cause we're supposed to pick three palettes. I have four, so I think I'm gonna narrow it down to this one, which is kind of like autumnal plus a cobalt blue. This one, which is kind of like supposed to be a combination of like earthy and digital tones, which I really like. This, this might be my favorite one so far. I think I'm gonna ditch this one and then use this one instead, which the theme is kind of like sunset pastels with like harsh black and white contrast. So one, two, and three. So yeah, let's do it. <laughs> goal with this whole experience was basically just to get color on paper. It didn't really matter if the finished painting looked super perfect. It was more about just exploring the colors in each palette in as many ways as possible. So I was thinking to myself, okay, how do these colors look next to each other? How do they look blended together? What happens if I change the proportions of the colors just a little bit? And later on, I can either keep these paintings as is or cut them up to use them in collages and stuff, which you'll see me do more of in my next video. But for now, it's just about play. After a few hours, I took a quick break to enjoy a blackberry scone, and I realized that the jam was a super gorgeous color, so I just, you know, I'm working with what I got, right? I also started to explore how the oil pastels and the watercolors would interact with one another. Because obviously oil and water don't mix, so I knew that I'd get some interesting resists if I drew with my oil pastels first and then painted over them. Then I switched things around by painting first, adding a layer of oil pastels on top, and then painting over the whole thing with a darker color. And I really like how this turned out.
Okay, I just pretty much spent the entire evening redoing my sketchbook, so let me show you how everything turned out. I am officially calling it for the day. I've put so many hours of work into this and I think it's in a place where I feel comfortable showing it to the class tomorrow and getting feedback and then seeing what's next. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Thursday. I'm heading over to class. We have like a full day of like show and tell essentially, I think with all of the things that we made. But before I head to campus, I wanted to show you what I'm wearing today because I'm wearing one of the vests that I got in Serbia this summer and I love it. It's so cozy. <laughs> Here's my attempt at showing them back. <laughs> it is such a pretty morning. One thing that makes me really happy every morning is that Ryan sends me a whole bunch of photos of our cat, Frankie. And because of the time difference, I tend to get a lot of them like when I wake up. So I'll open my phone and there's just, a pile of just like very silly cat photos and that just like makes my day every single day. <laughs> I'm also carrying so much stuff because today we get assigned a little studio space so I want to fill it with my art supplies so I don't have to trash my dorm every time I make stuff. <laughs> morning happy friday i didn't do that great of a job of filming yesterday just because most of what i was doing was just like lecture based stuff so it was a lot of just like one-on-one -on -one with teachers one-on-one -on -one with classmates and i just felt weird filming that today's my day off so i'm just heading to campus to run a whole bunch of errands but i just wanted to check in because i kind of like have been thinking a lot about the work that i've been doing and I think I might make some changes and I wanted to kind of like talk that through with you guys. So you guys saw those three color palettes that I've been working on over the past couple weeks and I've been putting quite a lot of work into it and I showed everything to the class and to my teachers and I got really good feedback but for some reason I'm just like not feeling it and I don't really know why and I've been just like trying to think about like what exactly doesn't feel right. I'm just not feeling stoked about any particular palette. And I really want to feel stoked about the colors of music, you know? Like that's something that really means a lot to me personally. And also just like when it comes down to a color assignment, like I feel like I shouldn't settle for not being really excited about the colors I'm using. I think a part of my feeling like this has to do with me trying to pick colors that I don't usually work with and that are like kind of out of my color comfort zone. But I think I went too far into like palettes that just don't spark 
inspiration. Like they're so out of my comfort zone that I'm just kind of meh. <laughs> so I've been doing some exploring. I've been looking on trend research websites. I'm gonna keep doing some like painted sketches and seeing how things go, but I might adjust some things and come up with some new palettes and I'll definitely update you as that goes on. So yeah, I just wanted to check in with that quick update just in case like if I start changing my palettes and changing my designs, you're not like, wait, what happened? <laughs> Besides that, my day is going to be pretty boring today, I think. I'm just going to be running errands and doing not exciting things. So I'll check in with you next time something fun happens. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I'm excited because today I'm going on a tiny adventure. So I recently found out that there's actually like a really cool destination literally right next to my campus. So I'm heading there now. It's called the Abbotsford House and it's the home and estate of Sir Walter Scott, who is a famous poet and novelist and playwright. And supposedly the estate is really beautiful. It has tons of gardens and beautiful kind of like artifacts and antiques to look at. So I'm sure I'm gonna have a great time just like wandering around, getting a lot of inspiration. And yeah, I thought it'd be fun to take you too. So let's go. spent the morning walking around the beautiful house which Scott purchased in the early 1800s after the success of his written works. He then spent the rest of his life building, rebuilding, collecting, and writing in this home. I decided to do the audio tour which featured an actor that was playing the role of Sir Walter Scott, and it was designed to make you feel like he was walking alongside you and giving you a personal tour of his home, which was really special. There were so many things to love about the design of this home, but one thing that I absolutely adored was that clearly Scott had an affinity for strange faces, gargoyles, and grotesques, which I also adore. I learned that Scott called these gruesome grinners, and a lot of the designs in his home are actually casts of the carvings on local Scottish ruins, like the Melrose Abbey. So as you could probably imagine, I had such a fun time looking around to find all of these weird little creatures hidden around the home. gardens and I'm just obsessed with the sounds of the birds here. I'm just gonna play you some soothing bird sounds. <laughs> That was such a beautiful visit. I really enjoy going around these like beautiful estates where people are just like curating and collecting art and artifacts throughout the ages. And I don't know, I find it really inspiring and really peaceful and meditative to just wander their property and take it all in. So yeah, today was a joy. I don't really have any plans for the rest of the day, but I don't really wanna just like go back to my dorm and just hang out in my dorm room. So I might wander over to the nearby town and just walk around and see what there is to see maybe pop into some charity shops or like get a coffee or something like that. I just want to make today like a really chill exploring me day. So let's do it. Oh my God, these have to be the biggest swans I have ever seen in my life. And look at the little butts. Ah! <laughs>
they all decided to come up to me, but I know swans can be kind of nasty, so I'm gonna keep walking and admire them from afar. <laughs> they realized that I didn't have anything to give them, so they literally all just like turned around. <laughs> Bye. Please mind the gap when alighting from this train. I just got off the train and there's that home goods store right there. I don't even know if you can see it. And they had a Halloween section. Did I need anything from that section? No. Did I get something? Maybe. And I'll show you what it looks like in my door. <laughs> With that, I'm pretty much done with week two of my Harriet Watt Scotland adventures. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. If you liked what you saw, I have many, many more weeks to come. So hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.